I am making a Thunder Dragon video redactophile. I've been messing around with it and I like how it works, although it is a 45 card deck, but I know what five cards would be, I at least what well, five cards I would take out to make it a 40 card deck. I'm going to start off with the monsters. I play three copies of Thunder Dragon Matrix. Matrix and all the other main deck Thunder Dragons, minus the original Thunder Dragon, all share the effect that they have two effects, one that they can discard them to activate, and another one that activates when they leave the field or are banished. And you only use one of those two effects of each Thunder Dragon once per turn. So if you d use a discard effect, you cannot use its effect when banished. Matrix has the discard effect of you can target a Thunder Monster you control and give it 500 additional attack points. And when at least the field door is banished, you can then add another Matrix from your deck to your hand. But like I said, you can only use one of those two effects per turn. And then next I play two, or two, three copies of Assault Synchron. Assault Synchron can be summoned from your hand by paying 700 life points. And then if your Dragon Synchro Monster is tributed or banished, you can then banish this card from your graveyard to summon back that monster that was tributed or banished. Which I remember correctly, it's actually part of a three card combo that gets two cards out of your opponent's hand. And then if either one is light or dark, it then gets put at the bottom of the deck and you get to draw a card. Next, I play Better Man Solar. Solar is another one of those three cards you need. So Better Man Solar has the effect that when it's normal or special summoned, you can send a Thunder Monster from your deck to the graveyard. And then it has the mandatory effect that if a Thunder Monster is special summoned, then you special summon a Battery Man token, which is a level 1 Light Thunder with zero attack and defense. The next, I play three copies of Thunder Dragon. This just lets you discard one copy of it to get add up to two Thunder Dragons from your deck to your hand. The reason you say up to is because you can add just one, which in this deck you really want to just add one. Unless you need discard fodder for nightmares, and you would add two. And then next, I play three copies of Thunder Dragon Dark. Dark has the quick effect of you can discard it to add another copy of itself from your deck to your hand. And then its other effect, when leaves the field or banished, you can then add any Thunder Dragon card except for Dark from your deck to your hand. Next, I play three copies of Thunder Dragon Hawk. Hawk lets you discard it to then special summon a Thunder Dragon that is in your graveyard or banished. And then if it is banished or leaves the field, you can take any number of cards from your hand, shuffle them into the deck, and draw the same number of cards. Next, I play three copies of Thunder Dragon Roar. Roar lets you discard it to add a Thunder Dragon card that is banished or in your graveyard to your hand. And then if it is banished or leaves the field, you can then special summon a Thunder Dragon monster from your deck but it returns to your hand during the end phase. And then for the Beastials, because this is a Beastial Thunder Dragon, I play one copy of Baldrake. Beastial Baldrake lets you, or all of the level six Beastials, let you target a light or dark monster in either player's graveyard, banish it to summon themselves. And then it, it, the, that becomes a quick effect if your opponent controls a monster. And then Baldrick has the effect that if your opponent special summons from the extra deck, or summons a monster or monsters from the extra deck, I believe that's how it works. Let's see. Okay, if your opponent special summons a ritual, fusion, synchro, XEs, or link monster, except during the damage step, you can attribute one other light or dark monster, and then target one of those summoned monsters and banish it. Then I play one copy of uh, Bestial Magnemite. Magnemite just let, has the effect that on summon, you can activate its effect so that at the end of the turn, you can add any dragon from your deck to your hand. I feel like Bald... Like Bald... Er, Baldrick. This card would have been better if, when it was released, if it said add a Bestial. But since it said dragon, it got put to one. 
I am blaming Dragon Link for this one. Anyway, next I play three copies of Bestial Serenir. Serenir and Magnemite and Lubellion are the, the third card you need for this three card combo. I'm mentioning that I'll go over at the end of the video. But Serenir just has the effect that when it's sent to the graveyard, you can send a Bestial or Branded Continuous or a branded spell or trap it has not, does not have to be continuous. It has to be a branded spell or trap or a bestial from deck to grave. And then next is three copies of bestial Druus Worm. Druus Worm you can cut down to one. I just like it at three because Druus Worm is my favorite. But Druus Worm lets you has the effect that when it sent from field to grave, you target one special on monster opponent controls and send it to grave. And to finish off the Bestials, I play three copies of the Bestial Lubellion. Lubellion lets you discard to add any level 6 or lower Bestial from your deck to your hand. And then you can special summon it from your hand or graveyard by tributing a level 6 or higher dragon other than the Bestial Lubellion. Or I think that's how that works. I'm going to check that real quick because I said it out loud and I don't think it's true. Let's see... Okay, you tribute a level 6 or higher Dark Dragon. And then... And then the last effect lets you take a branded continuous spell trap from your deck and place it face up in your spell and trap zone. Next, I play one copy of Chaos Emperor of the Dragon of Armageddon. This is another card that can be taken out of the deck. Hold on. But Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon, you don't care about its pendulum effect since I don't believe its pendulum effect can actually be used in this deck. But its monster effect, you can special summon it by banishing a light and dark monster from your graveyard. And then you can activate its effect to pay half your life points, send all cards you control to the graveyard except in the extra monster zone. And then you can send cards your opponent controls to the graveyard up to the number of cards you sent. And then your opponent takes 300 points of damage for every card that was sent to the graveyard by this card's effect. And lastly, if this special summon card leaves the field, it returns to the bottom of your deck. And then... You can also play one copy of Arc Nemesis Protos and Ashados. Either one of these can be taken out of the deck, if, or if you'd rather, you can take both out. But I like playing them both for now, so I figured why not. I'm honestly leaning towards taking Protoss out of the deck, as Protoss is not searchable in this deck, while Ashados is, just because Ashados is a dragon, so Magnuma can add it. But they both have the effect that they cannot be normal summoner set, and they have to be special summoned by banishing three different attributes from Grave, or three different types from Grave. Ashados is the easier one of these two to summon, but if you can get go through your full combo, then Protoss is also summonable. And then, they each do the same thing where they can't be destroyed by card effects, and then you can declare a one attribute or type, and destroy all monsters on the field with that declared attribute or type, depending on which one you're using. And then that attribute or type you called cannot be summoned until the end of the next turn. So like against uh, Chimera decks, with Protoss you would call Dark, but Ashadas it's harder because they use a bunch of different types. And then against Flowunderies you would call either Wind, Wind or Winged Beast. Preferably you do Winged Beast because then they can't do anything. But like I said, though, you can take either one or both out. And then, if you take, I'll say, a Chaos Emperor and two Druid Worms, that gives you a 40 card deck. But that is it for the monsters. Moving on to the spells, I play one copy of Branded Regained. Branded Regained has the effect that once per turn, if a light or dark monster is banished, you can target one of those banished monsters. Put at the bottom of the deck and then draw one card. And then 
Once per turn, if your opponent normal or special summons a monster, you can special summon a beast steal from your graveyard. And then you can only use that effect of Brandon Regained once per chain, which I'm going to be honest, when I first read it, I well, had misread it and thought its effect was once per chain, not once per turn. The once per chain just means if you have three Regained face up, then you can use that effect three times. But if you only have one, you can only do it once. Because that effect you regained is a soft once per turn, whereas the put a banished card at the bottom of the deck and draw a card is a hard once per turn. Then let's play one copy at Chaos Space. Chaos Space lets you discard a light or dark monster to then add a monster that cannot be normal summoner set from levels 4 to 8 from your deck to your hand of the opposite type. So if you discard a dark, add Lubellion. If you discard a light, add Chaos Emperor. And then you can banish this card from your graveyard to then target one of your... What is it? One of your banished light or dark monsters that cannot be normal summoned or set. Return it to the deck, or put it at the bottom of the deck, and then you can draw one card. One thing I like to do with this deck is have Cypher Immortal Mega put Chaos Space back in the graveyard just because then you can keep using its draw effect. Of course, it's going to be once per turn. You can only use each effective Chaos Space once per turn, but that's fine because Omega can only put Chaos Space back in the grave during your or during the standby. Or during your opponent's standby, I believe. Then I play two copies of Thunder Dragon Fusion. Thunder Dragon Fusion lets you fusion summon a Thunder Fusion monster from your extra deck by shuffling its materials from the field, or from field grave, or banished back into the deck. And then, during a turn in which this card was not sent to the graveyard, you can actually banish it to then add a Thunder Monster, or a Thunder Dragon Monster from your deck to your hand. Or my bad, you add a Thunder Monster, so it can be, like, Thunder Dragon Dark, or it could be the Chaos Creator. And then you can only use each effect of Thunder Dragon Fusion once per turn. Next, I play three copies of Tuning. Tuning has the effect that you can add a Synchron Tuner from your deck to your hand, in this case Assault Synchron, and then you send the top card of your deck to the grave. I am playing this just because if you need it, it can technically send a light or dark monster from your deck to the graveyard, so you can start doing bestial plays. Like one time I was using this and I had a bestial in hand, but I had nothing else I could really do. So I used this, added the Assault Synchron, and then I sent Thunder Dragon Roar to the grave, which, that started everything. And lastly, I play three copies of Allure of Darkness. Allure of Darkness just lets you draw two cards, but if you can't banish a dark monster after drawing two cards, then you send your entire hand to the graveyard. Also, one thing I forgot to, to say is that if you don't want to play Tuning, then you can just replace Tuning with Triple Tactics Talent, as that's what I, I was originally wanting to do, but then I thought Tuning would be better just so I can search the third copy, or the third card needed for that three card combo I was mentioning. And that is it for the main deck, moving on to the extra deck. For the extra deck, I play one copy of IP Mascarena. IP Mascarena just lets you Link Summon during your opponent's main phase using this monster you control as material. And then a monster that's Link Summoned with IP Mascarina cannot be destroyed by card effects. They also play one copy of SP Little Knight. Uh, if you don't have a Little Knight, then you can easily just toss in something like Nightmare Cerberus or some Summer Summoner. But SP Little Knight is, has the effect that when it's Link Summoned using a monster from the extra deck, then you can target one card on the field or in the graveyard and banish it. Which, every once in a while, you'll actually want to use that so you can banish your own Thunder Dragon monsters, so you can then tr trigger their effects. And then, SP Little Knight's other effect is that you can target... When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can activate its effect, target... One monster you control and one card on the field, or one card, one monster on the field and banish both. Until the end phase, or until, 
Was it the end phase or standby phase? I can never remember. Banish both until the end phase. Then I play one copy of Nightmare Phoenix. Phoenix just lets you discard a card, target a spell or trap card your opponent controls, and destroy it. And then if it was co-linked when this effect was used, you can draw one card. Then I play one copy of Nightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn lets you discard a card, target one card your opponent controls, shuffle it into the deck. Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, I play one of. It gains 800 attack for each material you use to make it. So if you use four different names, it has 32. If you only use two different names, it has 16. But once per chain, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can have it lose 800 attack points. And if it does, you then negate that monster's effect. Which means if you use four materials to make it, then you have a potential four uh, monster negates with its effect. And lastly, for the Link Monsters, I play one copy of Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Underworld Goddess has the effect that when Link summoned... or first, you can Link Summon by using one of your opponent's monsters. So you can actually use IP Masquerina to interrupt your opponent's board by linking off one of their monsters that they need to summon this. But of course, you need to have at least two other monsters on your field you can use since it does require a 4 plus. But Underworld Goddess has the effect that when Link summoned, you can activate your effect to then be able to negate your opponent, all face of cards your opponent currently controls. She is unaffected by your opponent's activated card effects that do not target her. And lastly, if your opponent activates a spell or trap that would summon a monster from the graveyard, you can negate that effect if you destroy that card. Whereas I believe it does. Nope, never mind. You do not negate it, you just negate the act or you do not destroy it, you just negate the activation. I'm used to negation cards saying negate the effect and if you do destroy that card. Which probably explains why Baron and Warlord Savage Dragon were banned. And for the synchros, this first one, I have a copy of it coming in the mail. I just was impatient and didn't want to wait for it to show up. But I play one copy of Martial Metal Marcher. Martial Metal Marcher is a level 3 wind machine tuner monster that has the effect that when it's synchro summoned, you can target a level 2 or lower tuner in your graveyard and special summon it with its effects negated. Then I play one copy of Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon. Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon has, in this deck, has, does the same thing as Martial Metal Marcher. You target a level 2 or lower tuner in your graveyard, special summon it with its effects negated. It has another effect, but since you don't play Stardust Dragon in this deck, that effect does nothing. And then we play one copy of Cyframe Lord Omega. Cyframe Lord Omega has the effect that during the main phase, quick effect, you can banish both this card and one card from your opponent's hand until your until your next standby phase. And then it has another effect that during your opponent's standby phase. You can target a banished card and return it to the graveyard. And then if Omega is in the graveyard, you can activate Omega's effect tar to target one other card in your graveyard, shuffle both Omega and that card into your extra deck. Or into, into your extra deck. Into your deck. Sorry, dogs were going ballistic. And then next I play one copy of Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chinging. Chinging has the effect that it, he gains 100 attack points for each banished card, and then all your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack and defense. It's attack and defense, or just attack? Okay, Chain gains 100 attack and defense for each banished card. All your, monsters, monst all your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack and defense for each banished card. And then if Chain would be destroyed by card effects, you can banish one, or was it one or two? You can banish... Let's see... I thought I found it. Okay, you banish one card from your graveyard instead. And if a card is, or cards are banished, you can activate Chinging's effect to then be able to banish two cards, one from your opponent's graveyard and one from your opponent's field. I just figured Chinging would be good in this deck since it does a lot of banishing anyway. 
Then I play one copy of Bestial Dispater. Bestial Dispater has the effect that once per turn you can target a banished light or dark monster, special summon it to your field. And then, if, a, if an opponent's monster effect is activated, you can target a banished card, shuffle into the deck, and then apply an effect based on which deck that card was shuffled into. If it was shuffled into your opponent's deck, negate that effect. Or if it was shuffled into your deck, you can destroy that monster. And you can only use each effect of Bestial Dispater once per turn. And Dispater and Omega are two of the cards you'll actually be using in the three card combo that I'll go over after as soon as I'm done with the extra deck. And then I also play one copy of Thunder Dragon Colossus. Go figure that Colossus will be used in a Thunder Dragon deck. But Colossus can be special has to be fusion summoned or special summoned from your extra deck. By attributing one thunder dragon or one thunder monster during the turn in which you've activated a thunder effect in hand, and then if thunder dragon colossus will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish a thunder monster from your graveyard instead. And lastly, your opponent cannot add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them, which that actually mattered against uh, Flawandry's deck as or I was playing against as all of their pot cards. Let them add excavate to add and then add one to hand. Since they do not draw, they cannot be activated while Colossus is in play. That and I just had everything they could prevent Rabina from going off, and they couldn't really do much. And lastly, I play three copies of Thunder Dragon Titan. Again, I got impatient, and I didn't want to wait for the third Titan to show up in the mail for me to make the video. But Thunder Dragon Titan has, can be, either has to be fusion summoned by using three Thunder Dragon monsters, or it can be uh, special summoned by banishing a Thunder Fusion monster you control, and a Thunder monster from your hand, but you're never going to summon it that way in this deck. But if you do want to summon it that way, then you can add Instant Fusion to the main deck and Kaminari Attack to the extra deck. But the main reason I'm playing three of it is just because if your opponent gets past two Thunder Dragon Titans and Colossus, you can use a third Titan using the other two Titans and Colossus as material to summon it, which I just like being able to recycle my resources. But Titan has the effect that if you activate a Thunder Dragon effect in hand, if your opponent doesn't do anything to interact with it, then you can activate Titan's effect to then be able to, to destroy one card on the field. Which I actually really like that effect. And then if Titan would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish two cards from your graveyard instead. But what has meant me with the Thunder Dragon thing is like if you go Matrix targeting Titan, if your opponent doesn't do anything, Titan can then destroy a card on the field. But if your opponent chain something like called by the grave to then target the matrix and negate it titan cannot go off because titan has to respond immediately to the thunder dragon the thunder effect in hand so let's see because i don't remember it has to be a thunder okay it's in whenever a thunder effect activates in hand not a thunder dragon thing but that is it for the extra deck moving on to the three card combo so these are the three cards you'll need for the combo, which is Bestial Serenier, Batterman Solar, and Assault Synchron. So what you'll do with these is you will normal summon the Batterman Solar. You'll then activate Solar's effect to send Thunder Dragon Roar to Grave. Then you will activate the Serenier's effect, targeting your Roar. Banish it to summon Serenir. Then, from there, your Roar will activate to summon Thunder Dragon Dark from deck. And then, because you summon Dark, Solar will activate, giving you a level 1 token. Then, you will activate Assault Synchron, summoning itself by paying 700 life points. And what you'll do from here is you will tune the Assault Synchron with the token to make your copy of Marshall Metal Marcher. 
And then Marsher will bring back the Assault Synchron. Then you will tune the Assault Synchron with the Serenir. To summon your Cypher Mord Omega. And then... No, not Omega. I did that wrong. You'll summon the... The Stardust Dragon. Because if you summon Omega, then it kind of just ends there. And then, Stardust Dragon will bring back the Assault Synchron. You'll tune Assault Synchron with the Stardust Dragon. To summon Bestial Dispater. Then you'll tune the Martial Metal Marcher with Dark. To summon Cyframe Lord Omega. Dark's effect will activate. Allowing you to add Hawk. And one thing I just now realized I forgot to do is when you Synchro Summon into the Stardust Dragon. You want to use the Serenir to send Bellion. Because what you'll do now at this point is you'll activate the Lubellion's effect, tributing the Dispater to summon Lubellion. And then because you tributed a Synchro, Assault Synchron will banish itself to summon the Dispater back. And then Lubellion will let you put Regained Face up. And from here, you will then activate the Omega's effect, banish itself and a random card from opponent's hand. And then if it was a dark light or dark monster, regain will put at the bottom of the deck and you get to draw one card. Then you'll use the you'll use this pair's effect, summon back Omega. And then you'll just use Omega's effect again. Now with that, you got rid of two cards from your opponent's hand. What or yeah, you get you'll have two cards out of your opponent's hand. And you'll have a monster in the or at the moment, unless Omega has banished a monster, you'll only have a monster destruction. Or a monster destruction. Bleh, I did that wrong. Or said that wrong. At this point, you have a monster negate, and then you can tribute the solar. Or you can't tribute the solar yet. You'll you'll use Thunder Dragon Hawk's effect to summon the uh, just any Thunder Dragon. So, like, at this point, unless you have one of your other two cards in hand do something, I would just summon the Thunder Dragon Dark. And then you can tribute the Solar, because you use the effect of a Thunder in hand, to summon your Thunder Dragon Colossus. So, with that, you have a Monster Negate, and you also have. You make it so your opponent cannot search for cards. And that's off, off of three cards, but that was a three-card combo I've been trying to figure out how to do, and I it was finally clicked that it has to be Serenir, because Serenir sends Lubellion. But that's it for my Thunder Dragon deck profile. If you have any ideas of what you can do to improve the deck, any ideas of decks I can see be made in the future, or decks I can see face each other, comment down below, and thank you for watching.